Now, my next guest rose to fame an incredible 20 years ago. She doesn't look old enough, does she? Uh, with her debut album, Call Off the Search. Now, Katie Melior is back with new music. Wow. Uh, Katie's latest single, uh, 14 Windows There, and she joins me now. You don't look any different from that <laughs> very first single that we saw that was a huge hit. And I suppose to those who may not know, it looks like you've had a perfect, you know, pop star, smooth life, but it's, it's been far from that at times. And actually, this new single is a reflection of that, isn't it? Yeah. 14 Windows. Tell me about it. It certainly is. So, uh... I mean, I, I feel so fortunate to have the job that I do have, you know, making records. And for me, music really helps me deal with life. And I mean, for so many people, songs are just, they're magical, right? They really change the kind of atmosphere in us. Um, but what happened in 2010 was that I had a really severe mental health crisis. Um, and I've spoken about it loads before. I've spoken on this show about it before, so I don't want to go into too many details. Um, but I had an amazing doctor looking after me. A psychiatrist. A psychiatrist, yeah. yeah. He was in charge of my entire care, so both from the medical, you know, the medicines that I was yeah. on and the entire care that I was under. Um, I was with him for about two years, and after two years, you know, I thank God I made a clean recovery. Mm. Uh, I got back the life that I'm so grateful to have, you know, to be able to go back to music, to be able to work and function and not live in, you know, all the fears that come with mm. having a mental health crisis. Mm. So I'm grateful to him immensely. Now, last year when I was working on the new music, I heard that he fell under the same illness and sadly took his own life, uh, which was, it just shocked me so much because he was so fantastic and I'm so grateful to him. Um, so the single, the proceeds from the single are going to the Royal Medical Benevolent Fund. I've which never is... heard of them before until well, you mentioned it. How interesting. I know, and I hadn't until I started researching, you know, where are the charities where doctors can turn to? We never think of that. Yeah, because there is real stigma. You know, they have such kind of positions in society that you don't think doctors... They're meant to know it all. Exactly, they? and, and they are the dealing, they're dealing yeah. with, like, the, the worst of, like, everything people are experiencing and, like, in so much volumes. My dad happens to be, to be a GP, so he went through COVID while being a GP at an NHS practice, and he never talks about his work. Mm. So I'd like to think that if he ever needed it, he would turn to the wall. incredible. And that's just one single, isn't it? And what's fascinating is, did you write most of this whilst you were pregnant? Is that right? Most of it, Some yes. Of it, yeah. I, I recorded most of it while I was pregnant. Yeah, we um, can see on the front there, on the, on the front... Oh, we'll show you in a minute, but you're <laughs> pregnant in the beautiful photograph on the front of it. And did that inspire you in different ways? Well, it did. I mean, actually, apart from this one song, which deals with mental health, yes. um, it's actually a really positive record. Yeah. I wanted to celebrate falling in love, becoming a mum, uh, and all the most glorious things that can happen in life. Because I think, you know, to capture them in music is a really special thing to do. And you've been on tour with your baby. I have, Which yeah, is kind was... of an unusual thing, is it? I mean, not just you, but I think you allowed... Well, not allowed, but you, you accommodated for yeah. your, your, some of your crew to bring their families along. Absolutely. So my front-of-house engineer, um, well, she's phenomenal. She's a brilliant engineer, so good at her job. She happens to have a two-and-a-half-year-old, and, -year -old, and uh, she was really keen to continue working. Uh, she didn't want to sort of stop her career. And so, yeah, we, we try to make that work the best way we can. I think that's, it's essential. Is that unusual in the music industry? For... You know, it's, it's not unusual for artists to bring no, their babies on the road because, of course, you know, there is this hierarchy. Yeah, I we really saw Beyonce try... with her daughter yeah. on stage. I mean, that exactly. we expect almost, yeah. I really try not to have a hierarchy. I mean, you know, it's there annoyingly, but for me, everyone needs to... Like, I want to work with the best of the best. And they happen to be some of the best engineers, some of the best crew. And, uh, and, yeah, she happens to be a woman, happens to have a baby, so let's try and make that work the best way we can. Is it still quite sexist in the music industry, in the, in the way things are viewed? It, you know, well, in... of course. I mean, the industry is infamous for, you know, the same thing that's there across all of society. But it's really trying to make progress, you know. And those of us who are lucky enough to have some power, we try and make the best, you know, a, a difference and we try and move things forward. And example of that, you know, letting crew... Uh, female crew come into the industry is really important. But how hard? I mean, it was... It can't have been easy for you even to have a... How old was your little one? So then? my little one was five months. <laughs> so we did six weeks with Sandro at five months, and then we did uh, when he was six... Oh, well, seven months. 
Uh, and then Bryony's little one is about two and a half. That is that is uh, that is intense, isn't it? Uh, it and can I, be. I suppose you're glad you did it because it meant you kept your family together at a time when of you course, actually are yeah. separated. I off. mean, absolutely. I mean, he was too young to leave at home, and I was breastfeeding. And wow, you know, so it was essential that. Yeah. Uh, and what I find interesting is, of course, you have Georgian background, don't you? Sort of, which a country that neighbours Russia, um, and you're re that still is a big part of your life, isn't it? You left there when you were ten, but it's a really core part of your identity oh, it's still. Absolutely. I mean, every time. I leave Georgia, I, I tend to shed a tear. I, I get really sad leaving it because I left when I was eight. So you uh, know, eight. a lot of my yeah. childhood that was still there and a lot of my identity is, you know, very much rooted in Georgia. And you've already taken your little one yes, over. Yes, we took him over last month and uh, he met his extended family and uh, it was wonderful. Yeah. Well, it's lovely to have you back. You are a really hard worker. I was looking, you never take very much time off in between albums. Well, I just love what I do. Making records is just the greatest thing. Well, we are very lucky to have you, aren't we, in this country? Thank you so much. Thank a you. beautiful record. Katie's new single, 14 Windows, and the proceeds, as you say, go towards a benevolent fund for GPs and other doctors, is out on September the 8th. September the 8th. Yeah, the album is out now. Super stuff. Thank you so much, Thank Katie. You.